stay from the castle we did last year. Um, it's mostly the same. The landscape has expanded. And if you can see, there's a massive siege going on. And so I'll start on this end. We've got some of the knights jumping off this boat and they're charging through this line of skeletons here. We, we pick skeletons to be the enemies and they stick out pretty well and you can do some fun things, you know, break them apart and they're all, you know, like that. It's also very easy to tell who the, the good guys and bad guys are because the skeletons are never the good guys. Right, it's really easy to tell there. Um, here you can see that they've busted through the gate and they've, uh, they've thrown the guy off with the battering ram they don't need anymore and they're charging through. And if you can get a shot of the inside, you can see a bunch of pikemen ready to defend and one of them's got one skewered on there. So, yeah, um, we just got some more archers and guys marching this way. Um, we have this small house here is somehow unscathed from all this, the archer behind it. Um, we got some siege ladders, um, some guys trying to pull vault over the walls. Um, this ladder didn't make it, and this alligator's about to eat some skeletons. That's um, an excellent use of the flex tube there for the pole vaulting. <laughs> right, yeah, that was actually a Trent's idea, I think. And um, we have this area here where they've like entrenched, entrenched themselves. They got catapults and they're the guys uh, planning out stuff. And you can see where they've hit like the tower that's kind of slanting over. And one guy's scared and one guy's pretty happy about it. Um, there's also uh, here we've got two of the gold knights. They're like the heavy, uh, really powerful knights. And they're standing on the bridge fending off this uh, force going in. Um, so yeah, we got some skeleton horses and pikemen that are trying to uh, fend off this massive wave of horseback knights coming in, which probably won't go too well. But um, over here we have a trebuchet, which is they're launching these uh, flaming boulders in the castle. You can see in there where they've hit the house and it's on fire. And there's a section here where they've taken out a wall and the guy's fallen off. And then, let's see. The trebuchet is a very nice detail here. Does it actually function if you try to try to um, use it? It looks like it would function, but if you push this down, it would swing a rock and probably hit this guy, <laughs> and that would be a shame. Um, we've got a wizard here who's kind of commanding all the skeletons. He's, like, brought them back from the dead or something, and they're all charging in. Um, so, yeah, uh, over here, this has been relatively untouched. We just got some, you know, farming. There's corn, nothing interesting there. Um, there's a few guys from the back trying to climb up the side. This guy's fighting them off. Um, the farmers have had to take up arms here. Right, yeah. And there's a couple on the beach here, and just they don't really want to fight. They're just drinking and having a good time. And then um, you see this like ninja skeleton climbing at the back, hopefully getting in where you know no one will suspect. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I love all that ad added detail then. So it's, it's great to see what you guys have done, you know, making the whole siege and adding the, the more action-packed uh, battle going on here. Right, yeah. It's uh, I did most of the setting up of the minifigs. It was a lot of fun to do. And just trying to give it, like, a motion to it where you can see where all the movement is. Kind of like if you unpaused it, you could tell what was going to happen next. Mm -hmm. So... Um, going to launch into the, the interior then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'll take that over. So we'll first start with our armory. You can see we have a little catapult on top of here. And if you notice, they've been trying to take out the trebuchet and they've hit a couple skeletons, but they've unfortunately missed the trebuchet. So they're still working on that. Um, there's also a cool little crane here and a group of peasants that are bringing up munitions for the trebuchet or the catapult rather. And you can see the, when we, re we remove the roof, we have the first level of the armory. Um, it's all the archery weapons, which makes sense since you're actually up on the wall. The second level of the armory is all the pole arms. And you can see, notice that a lot of them are missing because they're actually being fielded right now. Inside our great hall, there's a lot of peasants that are being armed too that are conscripted into fighting, so. All hands on deck right yes. now because <laughs> the skeletons, as you can tell, have broken through, so it's uh, getting intense. It doesn't look very good. We wanted it to be kind of ambiguous to who's gonna win this thing. Um, next, we have our blacksmith. They're kind of just busy away, you know, keep making weapons even though there's a battle going on. I'm going to continue just taking off different sections here and handing them off to my brothers. We've got ourselves a pole turner. That's a little foot-driven lathe, so a guy makes all your spears. There you go. You've got everybody in here. <laughs> and they're all hard at work, too. Okay. 
And like you said, there's a better shot of the house that's on fire, and you can kind of see the bucket brigade that's going on from the peasants from the well because they're trying to put out the fire because fire's not really that great. There's a shot of the wagon with all the munitions for the catapult. Okay. And you can see that we still have a lot of our vendor stalls in there, but they're kind of abandoned. You can see all the peasants and people running away, although the one lady's running towards there. Maybe she's quite brave and she wants to actually fight the skeletons. Okay. Yeah, I love the fire effects there on that house and the d destruction. Yeah, it was actually uh, kind of a lot of fun to sort of destroy Lego for once <laughs> instead of build it. And let me get this last bakery, and then I'll turn you over to Andrew for the gatehouses. Yeah, just a little bakery, so you can get you some um, pies and croissants and things. Here you go. And we'll let Andrew describe our gatehouse there. Okay. Come around here to the front, then. Yep. So this is our main gatehouse. Uh, we have a functioning drawbridge and portcullis. So if you see, if you want to get a shot right there, this portcullis, it'll open up, like so. And then whenever the enemies start coming in, you can drop it. Perfect, there you go. <laughs> so this gatehouse also, uh, as is as everything else in here, it does uh, come apart. And so we've got the top piece comes out. So you can see into the inside, we've got our winch system inside there. All our, uh, you know, drop the portcullis and drawbridge. And then each of these sides come off. And we've got more troops rallying inside there, getting ready for weapons and everything. You can see the rest of the gear system inside there. And then, of course, there's one more layer. Uh, and you can see we've got crossbowmen, uh, and there's little shooter ports to shoot if anyone's coming in up to the gate. Perfect. Yeah, this is incredible, the level of detail you guys always put in this. I, I, I'm, it's coming back to me from last year now, like how much you put into this. It's just so insane. I, I love seeing all this come, come apart. So the next thing we'll go to are our stables. And uh, the first thing you'll see, this is a tower where we had the, uh, the hit. Uh, and you can see we still have stuff in there. Stuff's been knocked over, you know, took took the catapult hit. Uh, but then the next thing we have, we have these stables. And I want to show you a view inside this way first. So this comes off. And you can see inside kind of the horses. The You got the little loft up there with a bunch of stuff there. Uh, but then this also comes off. And you can get a better view inside there. And of course, not all the horses are there because they're trying to saddle them up and get the get the troops out and moving. We even got a guy down here that hatch leads to our underground. You know, he's moving down to reposition somewhere else in the mm -hmm. castle. Uh, we have our second gatehouse here, and this has been significantly more upgraded. Uh, the portcullis does function, except that right now it's kind of destroyed. Uh, they've busted through, and on the other side, you can see the piece of it that fell off. Uh, but similar to the other gatehouse, this also does completely come apart. Uh, so again, it's very similar to the other one. We'll just kind of do this pretty quickly. I'll go and pull it off. Um, and yeah, and you can see over there the, the skeleton that kind of first first victim <laughs> that the, fell to the pike. The money shot right there. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is again, this is just very similar stuff you saw in the other the other place. So our last building here on the corner, uh, we have our church, and so we can you can see we've got a nice stained glass window yeah, there. Yeah, that's incredible. We've got our, our bell tower up top, uh, but then inside of it, we've still got a bunch of peasants in there praying. You know, hoping the battle goes well this time. Just you know, when all else fails, pray, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, we've got a little organ in the back here, a uh, little priest quarters back here. Um, and then on the back side of it, we have a little garden, a little, you know, fenced in, gated in garden, a little statue, water fountain feature. Mm -hmm. They don't look particularly concerned about the horde of skeletons coming through. The door. You know, some people didn't quite get the memo. <laughs> uh, yeah, here you can see it's just, these are the skeletons that broke through. Uh, you can see the piece of the portcullis on this one. Uh, and then on here, well, we've got our, our yellow building here. Open that up. Uh, we have our, our tinsmith inside here. Okay. Just, you know, still working away. <laughs> doing what he can. Uh, let's see. The last building we've got inside this castle is our inn. And it's, uh, we have an inn with rooms upstairs. 
So we got a couple bedrooms up here, and then we have a kind of a pub downstairs. And you know, I guess if you're not praying the battle away, you drink it away. <laughs> so one way or another, I guess. One way or another. Yep. So I guess next I'm going to send you to Trent to take a look at the key. Okay, great. We'll walk back to this side then. Cumbersome mock here. It's quite big. <laughs> so this is the top of the keep. Um, <clears throat> you notice the guys aren't particularly worried yet because the skeletons haven't made their way up here. Mm -hmm. um, we have kind of a, a nice relaxing room, kind of like a smoke room. Maybe you bring your ambassador there from another country or castle. Maybe not go to war. That obviously did not happen today. The floor below that is sort of the royal chambers. You can see we've got all of the different rooms, king's quarters, prince and princess. You notice the king is out kind of surveying the battle from a safe position. Um, we also have a little monk's area for the library, and there's actually secret entrance behind this wall that can move, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Pass this on down. The next layer has my favorite room in the entire build. It's the war room that has a micro-scale version of the castle. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. So you can see the old general and a couple of his other soldiers are kind of planning the battle. Um, connected to that is the map maker room. And there's also a throne room, which people are arguing about. Maybe, why is the king just standing up there? Why isn't he out there fighting? Or we don't know what to do. What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. So um, let's see here. Toss off another layer here. So the sides of the Great Hall, just kind of a guard's area. We also have a Black Falcon ambassador room. So we're actually allied with the Black Falcons in our fantasy because we're fighting the evil skeleton. So it's humans versus right. evil. Everybody has to get on board here. <laughs> There's also a cool little band that's up at the top that's kind of playing music right now for all the people in the Great Hall to try to keep them calm during this very scary time. And then lastly, we have the Great Hall, which normally there's a big feast going on inside there. However, it's been transformed into sort of the, the headquarters for the battle. And so there's a triage going on in there, and there's also the arming of the peasants. So we can remove this wall so we can kind of get the minifigure view if you were walking through okay. those doors. And then if I can get Landon to help me out take the um, chandelier off, you can kind of get a better view of what's going on. You can see we have some wounded. You see the peasants are all being conscripted and all hands on deck, like you said. And we have our stained glass uh, lion in the back. That stained glass is beautiful, yeah. You, you achieve so much with that. So now you can see that the underground is fully revealed. We've got kind of the kitchen area. There's sort of a preparation of food, uh, perishable goods. There's a brewery and uh, an area to store all the extra wine. We've got guards' quarters. They're taking rest right now. Barracks next to that. We've got a really cool archives room with all the books. There's sort of a statues room for all conquests of different uh, armies. Mm -hmm. If you notice in the middle there, we've got an alchemist who's doing sort of potion work and, and who knows what. Maybe he caused this today. We're not sure. <laughs> um, and maybe we can swing around to the other side really quickly here. And you can see we've got a, a foundry right here. Um, next to that is a treasury. There's a little tax collector's office in there. Another barracks. And then there's a servant's quarters. And lastly, in the back, you can see the crypt, which is under our church. And you might notice that all the things that are supposed to be dead are not dead. They've also been summoned during the battle. So there's Something's a few, going wrong. There's a few guards there going, uh-oh. And they're trying to fight those guys off, too. And I'm going to turn you over to Andrew really quickly with for the port. Okay. So we just got a couple quick things here. So our port towers, uh, we got you know large ballista on there to protect the port, you know, take out any ships coming in. Uh, but each one of these come off, and inside this one, you've got ammunition inside here for the ballista. The guy can send up through this little hatch here, uh, and then underneath it, the next layer, we have a large winch system for this chain. So you can normally you'd have that sunk in the water, but whenever the you know you want to block the port off, you pull it tight. No boats can get through. Uh, the other tower is very similar, uh, and it's, it has basically the same thing inside of it. Mm -hmm. So I just can't quite reach it here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the port's a great extra kind of added detail, and that chain is always a cool effect as well. 
So yeah, that's that's crazy. You guys brought the whole thing back here and you added on to it. So is there plans then to expand again next year and future years? Oh yeah, we're we're gonna keep doing this for a while. <laughs> we've we've already been talking about our plans for next year and after that. So uh, we'll keep doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for taking us through the whole thing. I, I like the teamwork of you guys taking off the floors and everything and working through it all. So it's always impressive to see what happens here. And I can't wait to come back next year and see what you guys have added. So appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Douglas Johnson from Nashville, Tennessee, and I have this is part of a collaborative for the Classic Cl Classic Castle Collaborative, and we've got uh, four people total that contributed to this 30 foot by four foot layout. So this is quite the massive <laughs> layout here, going all the way down. It sure is, and I really think that we did a great job uh, with the four people doing it in sections and really coordinating. I mean, we've got some similar trees. Our landscape is pretty similar. Some rock work and everything looks great. Even the castles uh, do coordinate. I mean, we've got all the crosses on the windows and that actually turned out great. We did not plan that. Um, we, it was my idea to light up all the water and Mark Erickson and I uh, teamed up and did that. Um, so hit, my section is from this side of the boats over here to the end of the, the table with the village. Okay, great. So then if you want to start here and kind of take us through your section and kind of point out some of your favorite buildings and details along the way. Yeah, I tell you, I love this bar right here and it is detailed inside with some musicians and th there's guys drunk fighting in there and some dancers. Um, I've got a wagon shop, there's the post office, an arrow shop, we've got um, uh, potions and spells, uh, the fabric shop, we've got a little hotel inn, uh, another bar, and then of course our town hall uh, for our black, my Black Falcon Village. That town hall is such a great design as well, the way you kind of uh, almost, it almost looks like you took several of the smaller buildings and kind of put it together to make one big, really impressive building. Yeah, I like it because I used the uh, medium blue on the second floor, the bright light blue on the third floor, and then going back to the medium blue on the fourth floor. And that really helps add contrast, helps bring your eye into it, especially with the orange colored trees. Uh, it really helps it pop like that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we've got some uh, market area over here, and of course, we got the gallows with the guillotine. Uh, Somebody's having a bad day there. Well, we can't have pirates in here with our castle, so we got to get rid of them. And then here appears to be the the most impressive building of this section. Uh, yeah, I love my uh, Black Falcon Castle. Of course, I hear that everybody builds a Black Falcon Castle. Um, this has honestly got between twenty-seven and twenty-eight thousand pieces in it. It is double walled on the inside with solid bricks and each floor does come off. Uh, there's only one room that's detailed right now is the master bedroom. I just haven't had time to go back and detail all of it. Um, but it was so much fun doing that texture work and, and when I set out to do it I said if I'm going to do a castle I got to do it like this and I know it's going to look great. And I think it did. It turned out fantastic in my mind. No, it really did. And so if you can give some more detail on that, kind of some of the pieces you used there and, and how that came together, the wall design there. Yeah, so I pretty I started with like 7,000 metallic one-by-one uh, -one rounds. And of course, 7,000 is not nearly enough. So I ordered another 5,000 and then another 2,000. But mixing with the light gray, the light blue, the bright light blue to help with the Black Falcon colors, keep it blue, um, I think that helped pull in keeping it with the same faction and then of course with the the brackets uh, I was able to do some snot work um, and then on the inner wall of the the stone work there's um, brackets on that pushing up against the inner wall so when you push against the texture wall it's not going to go anywhere um, and like I said every floor will come off um, yeah. The gate does work. The drawbridge does work. I think it's definitely a formidable defense here for the rest of the, the town. And uh, what is the, the, the faction or what theme is, is the soldiers coming out from there? Yeah, so those are my original Dragon Knights. Um, I think in the story of Lego, they had the Dragon Knights as a friend to the Black Falcons. And I didn't have enough Black Falcon soldiers to arm them, but I already had my Dragon Knights and I said, you know, I'm going to pair them up and team them together and they're going to come out and, and make their way to the end of the table, to the end of the battle. Mm -hmm. um, probably one of my favorite scenes 
of course, is the vineyard. But then coming out from the vineyard, you've got these forest creatures that have snuck through and stolen some wine, and they're getting a little intoxicated in the wheat field there. I like how you did the path that they took into the into the wheat field, oh, the trample. Yeah, of course, and you know they're sitting down. So this guy over here that's cutting the wheat, he's not going to see him right now until he gets over there, and then they're going to scramble. Oh no, someone's coming, you know. Um, and so we've done a lot of work with the forest men in here. Um, the pumpkin guys in the back, they're stealing pumpkins. Up here, they're stealing chickens. Um, just a lot of dif just different work um, with the uh, forest men creatures. We wanted to, to bring those in and have fun with them. And then here's some great movement you've incorporated in there. How, how did you get that to work? Yeah, that is, of course, my windmill. I used the large sail um, blades for the, for the blades uh, from the boats. And uh, of course it's geared in there, but uh, that was really, really fun to build. And um, I have a lot of, a lot of people enjoy that as say that that's their favorite of the whole thing. Um, the mountain and the waterfall, I believe you guys have seen before. Uh, last year and even this year I have the, the rock creature motorized where it does come out, uh, but I, I didn't have time to put the motor on it this show. And all of the water does light up uh, unfortunately, they just did not give me enough power outlets at this show, so I can't plug, all, plug it all in. There's a lot of lighting in here, though, which, which really makes the build pop, I think, especially with like the movement of the water. Yeah, there sure is. And probably one of my last favorite buildings is actually the, the church ruins. I've got the uh, Dragon Knight stained glass window in the back, and I wish I had it lit up, but I, that was one layout I did for the Classic Castle online contest. Um, results still pending, but uh, I think I did a pretty good job with the sunken floor and having the, the knights kind of with the white flag surrendering a little bit. Um, yeah, I love to see ruined buildings with Lego because it's, it's not as easy as you think. You know, you think you could just kind of knock yeah. pieces down, but really you got to make it, you don't want weird patterns in there. You want to make it look natural, which isn't always easy with the, the rectangular bricks. Yeah, and honestly, as I started building that, I was like, this looks too much like a square building or it looks too good. I need to like destruct it more. And you're right, that making ruins is actually harder than people think it is. I love the little throwback to the Islanders there, the canoe coming down. <laughs> yeah, I saw those in my box this weekend. I was like, where can I put these? Oh, yeah, they're going to, you know, panic going down the waterfall there. So, yeah, well, that is great. I think your section turned out really awesome. I appreciate you taking us through that there. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, coming and uh, interviewing me. And then we'll move on to Mark Erickson, who we have right here. So we'll bring you in and you can start with i guess the ships in the water here is kind of the start of your section yes this is my, the beginning of the middle section which is my section uh, i got the fleet here covering the river that's you know separates me and douglas then over here it goes all the way towards robert's castle mm -hmm. yeah great so if you just want to start with kind of details of the ships and some of the techniques you use there and take us through yeah so um the ships are actually just the basic lego boat hauls i managed to get a couple of them because i work at a lego retail store you did a video for a while yep. back um and so I, I got those recently and managed to scrape together enough brown parts to decorate them as medieval cogs uh, which are ships that uh soldiers back then used to fight you got some a viking ship here that sailed into the wrong uh, <laughs> inlet and uh the, the lion knights are all about to chase him out of here so yeah I like it. And then you've got kind of the island keep there in the main castle. Exactly. Uh, the, the main idea for this castle was to have the keep be super secure. And the best way I thought to do that would be two drawbridges, two different moats. So you have the first, which is like the city section. And then the second leads up to the keep, which is on a rock over the ocean, separate from the already strong castle. So double strong. Mm -hmm. And talk about some of the details in here. I love the, the stained glass pieces and then the, the kind of houses in there as well. Yes, so um, uh, the second most important thing for the castle for me was to have an interesting layout. So I have a lower section of the city down below, and then above that there's a little uh, a plateau of sorts. And so the, the Tudor buildings below are all in the lower section, and the, the very top is the church. And back in medieval society, the church was the highest part of the society. So the church is at the very top, kind of uh, crowning the entire city, as it were. So, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There you go, and then we move kind of away from the castle into more of the countryside sort of here. Yes, so um, we were trying to make a 
nice flat scene compared to our last year's, which is a huge mountain and an extreme challenge to move. So we just have a nice flat countryside, easy to transport and set up. Uh, well, for the most part, all those plants took a very long time to set up this uh, this uh, convention. But yeah, we have some houses, some agriculture, some sheep, uh, lots of foresters hidden throughout the scene, a few knights, a few cows, and occasionally you can spot a dragon or two if you look look very carefully, or a, a dragon as I've. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I heard. So. Yes. So talk about some of the, the tree techniques as well, because there's all different ways and the different colored leaves and stuff that you have in here. Yes. Uh, well, some of the leaves are actually alt bricks, so that they have the unique colors and they're actually a little bit stronger clutch power. So those actually help with some of the sh unique shapes we've got going on here. Um, then we have like different types of trees. We have the palm leaves used for the pine trees, which is something I've been doing for a while. It looks pretty nice. And it gives me an excuse to use the palm leaves in an otherwise northern climate. So, yep. And then, um, yeah, so there's, we tried to just build all the trees on the spot, which was a bad idea in retrospect, but they look nice because they're fragile and they wouldn't survive the trip. So... <laughs> Exactly, and then you've got this keep here, which the first thing I noticed there's the really cool chrome, it's like silver chrome helmets on the soldiers. Yes, absolutely. That that castle was built by my brother Stephen, so uh, it's very fancy and very elegant. And uh, the chrome helmets are actually, they're Lego helmets, but they've been painted by a company in Poland. So um, they're very high quality. They're like the, Lego has done similar products in the past for special minifigures and whatnot, but uh, these are just uh, generic helmets, but they've been chrome. So that's the story behind those. And then here's a forest man, a few forest men getting attacked, kind of fighting for their life down yeah. here. Yeah, they've just encountered uh, one of Steven's dragons. We have several throughout the scene, and so uh, they're not sure whether they're about to be eaten or find a friend, so we're kind of left it at that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got Castle Grayskull here. Was that one of your builds as well? Yes, and that was actually a, a combination build with me and my brother. He did the front part, the nicer part with the skull, and I kind of finished the back because he wasn't able to do it. So, uh, But it's... it's based off of the old He-Man TV series from the 80s, but uh, we never saw it, but we thought it was a very interesting Lego build, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great source material then. And it looks like we've gotten to the beginning of the large army here, and is this the uh, start of a new section? Yep, this is actually, from this line over, is gonna be Robert's section over here, but uh, I had a, a whole bunch of medieval knights to use, so um, I didn't quite have enough room in my scene, so they've all decided to try and take Robert's castle out. So. <laughs> they're on the offensive, very cool. Then we'll move down to Robert here, and if you wanna take us through your section, talk about what you've got. Yeah, so I just got a big castle. I got a church here that I built yesterday, gatehouse. Mark's attempting to storm the castle. He is going to fail, because you can't beat the crown. You gotta respect the crown. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you've ever seen Star Wars, I've got the high ground, so there's not a chance he can make it through. There you go. So let's start off with the church then. You see, I know that it was a real recent build for you. What are some of the techniques you used yeah, there? Like, I love everything gothic style, you know, high arches, anything vaulted, uh, fine buttresses, all that kind of stuff is great for me. I just really enjoy it for some weird reason. Um, I got aqua in there. It's a pretty rare color. I like how it turned out with the white. Yeah, you don't see that color used yeah. real often. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty unique, but definitely underestimated how long it would take me to build it because I spent all day doing it. But. And then you've got kind of the, the gatehouse here leading into the castle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's supposed to deter the guys, although I put the drawbridge on the wrong way. So once they take the gatehouse, they can just lower the drawbridge. <laughs> Didn't think that one through, but... A little bit of design malfunction yeah, there. hopefully they can hold off the gatehouse. Yeah. There you go, and a little bit of wizardry in here. Yeah, I decided to add that this morning. It looks like he's burning the bear. I was going for summoning, but I guess burning would work too. But, yeah. And then the castle itself, where did you kind of start from on, on this build? Yeah, all my castles, I just kind of start off with the base plate and just see where it goes from there. Uh, definitely made the front first. I've been working on it since about October. Uh, really, the last three weeks, I finished it. Trying to. My favorite part about it is the... Uh, stone statues up there. What's the structure like on the inside of the, the castle there? Uh, mostly just like random colorful bricks, just the structural support. One of these days I'll build a castle with an interior, but we ain't got the time for that. <laughs> no, yeah. that's very time in peace intensive yeah. Oh, yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. And then Stephen lent me a dragon to put over there above the church looking part. So Because those just make everything yeah. oh, better. Yeah. You gotta have a dragon, just pop a dragon on a castle, put one on Grey Skull. That makes the scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when when you guys w arrived at the show, was this the first time that the whole thing had all been put together, oh, all yeah. your sections? Yeah, I actually screwed up the road real bad and had to fix it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. 
So I'm, I'm pleased with how it looks, pleased with how it turned out. It's pretty good for four dudes never coming in contact till the day of. I got here late because I had to work, but yeah, I'm pleased with the scene. Looks good. Yeah. Mark and Steven are awesome. Douglas is an amazing contributor. It's just been a good scene. Good fun. Yeah, all of the sections turned out great, but then you, you put it all together like this, and it's just amazing. I think you said it was 30 feet long worth of yeah. worth of castle builds here and towns yeah. and everything, so that's really impressive. I appreciate you chatting with me. Yeah, Thank you. Welcome. My name is Rune, and this is my build, uh, my castle. Uh, I call it uh, Sir Wuix, uh, land and uh, castle. So, yeah, this build is made of me and my dad's, mostly me. And it's a, it's a massive layout here, so why don't we start at this end and we'll kind of make our way around and check out the whole big layout. Thank God we do. Um, if we start here, we have a little battle going on between the dead's and the living. Uh, and that, uh, yeah, a lot of nights. <laughs> just to make something moving. Mm -hmm. You always gotta have the big battle scene in every... <laughs> always at the big battle scenes. Mm -hmm. So it seems like the living are winning this fight. So yeah, that's okay. the big battle. And then we have uh, the little small farm life we can see here, uh, where we have the windmills and the farms behind, where you have all kinds of um, yeah things you can uh, have on a farm. I like your use. Is that the the, the white gate piece there yeah. for the the windmill? Yeah, it's good use of them. Uh, I make it make uh, look like a windmill. So, little yeah. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Then we have uh, the town wall, or the wall who have to defend the town from attacking. So there's also good use of knights and many knights and yeah. Then we. 
kan man sige, det er som rich houses coming to, where we have a little small uh, ki- eller garden, where they also have a little uh, pumpkins and everything they need to have in. So, yeah. Yeah, these bu- buildings are fantastic here. Yeah. This this one in particular that we're looking at right now. Yeah. Talk about kind of the design of that and and how that came together yeah. for you. It came to the design of uh, looking after in a Warhammer fantasy role-playing book. Okay. Yeah, if we get a little inspired about how the houses are made and then I took some use of the pictures from the book. Uh, also, I have a lot inspired by role-playing games and something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, So yeah, and then can inspire with. Uh, I will want to make this use of all the small gray pieces I have. So that was just to build it up and then came to the yeah use of it. Yeah, well, it turned out great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, then we came to the harbor, uh, which the ships we are going to make in and live in the harbor, and you have all this farm life and or how harbor life. <laughs> So you got the the jugglers, clowns yeah, down here. Want to make space, Ella. Something like a uh, fun of the cities. There also is uh, someone going to make living in the city. So just normal city life, but bone city life, but also fun life mm-hmm. in itself. And then we have, the, uh, yeah, let's see what it is called again. Yeah, I noticed you got the movement going yeah, on movie. here. I have many movie partners, uh, windmills and. Stairs to go up again, and yeah, so it's going to get a lot of movement in the layout to make it more attractive. So yeah, and then talk about some of the the roofs on some of the buildings yeah. here. It's mostly a use of this uh, slopes price. We get a lot of in the brick box <laughs> last year, <laughs> yeah. so that was good use of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, also to make it look like uh, this normal. House you have that old time house, yeah. Mm-hmm. So very impressive. And then we make our way down to the the castle now. Yeah, I think it's time to the castle. And yeah, I write in down on a block everything I want in a castle, and I try to make it <laughs> this castle. See, you had kind of a list. It was like yeah. this is everything that my castle needs. Yeah, everything. Uh, it needs a kitchen. It needs a sleeping quarter. It needs a weapon room. Where you can store your weapons, it needs a library, it needs a gates, <laughs> and yeah, so if, everything. Let's start on this side then and yeah. see, see what, what do we have here. Okay. Here we have the bed quarter from the men, and yeah, we have a little outside in the tower where they have the bell if they're going to attack. Okay. And then we have the weapon uh, rooms chamber with all the armory and stuff they can have to be ready to fight. Uh, yeah, and down we have some minings, uh, both sides, two minings to yeah, make it look like they also have some money they can spend or uh, jewelry. Mm-hmm. And then we have uh, something inside uh, this gatehouse uh, where you can set uh, the gates up and down. And right now it's up because there are some uh, knights who go, have to go and out. So that's mostly a gatehouse. Um, and I love the the custom kind of tile, the way you've done the tiling floors here, yeah. the with your patterns and everything there. So it's I think every room almost has a, has a unique looking floor. Yeah, many have uh, unique. Uh, some have this uh, headlight bricks here, down here we have the headlight things. But mostly I try to make good use of the parts I have. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I try also to make every room to look unique. Yeah. Yeah. So now we came over to the library, I can see. And there we also have this cool use of new floors, techniques, and all the books in the shelf to make it look like a real library. And the monks are going to write new books because that's what you do that time. Mm-hmm. Even the little kind of stained glass windows in there. Yeah, many stained glass. It takes like a lot of works to make it look like realistic and I have use are many cheese slopes in this project mm-hmm. and under the castle is a little secret room or a, yeah dungeon where the dragon is hiding in with his de- treasure so it's also to make it more like you also have a need to have a dragon in this castle of course yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we have the statue strategy room or the statue 
room uh, under stairs. Where the planning there takes and going, you got to do this to get it. Fight this army and then we know where the, their ship are. And it's actually form like uh, Denmark because okay. we are in Denmark. I love that raised map there and just yeah. kind of how you raised up some of the, the pieces there to give yeah. that kind of elevation look. That That's perfect. Yeah. It's also because the T-slope, they don't fit well. <laughs> uh, also, I have to make it more thick and bigger. And all upstairs, we have the visa quarter uh, where they make uh, everything poisons, how you make to make poisons and something. You have everything you need, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then we... Him. There's many pirates, walls, everything, and we have still defense upstairs uh, the castle, where you still can see the knights are going to be ready if they're going to be attacked. It looks very strong. Lots, lots of men manning the walls. Not so men. <laughs> the rest are out to fight, if they're not here. <laughs> uh, and as we round the corner here, if we can see, yeah. Then we start for the important. I can see we have this. King's treasure room because Quinn, the king also needs to have his treasure somewhere, and there was a dragon in the other treasure room, so he cannot have, have all his thoughts <laughs> there. And yeah, upstairs we saw have uh, the king's bed, uh, the queen's bed room uh, with the new prince who, who was born, okay. always with a helmet. <laughs> and he's something. already got the helmet. Yeah. Uh, upstairs we have the princess room where you can see. He's a, she has a mirror and uh, perfum perfumes and everything to look beautiful and have uh, servants mm -hmm. with her. Yeah, so that's her room. And then on this final side of the, the castle? Side, we have the throne room uh, where the queen are rejects a lot of men because maybe the king maybe lost the war outside. She don't know yet. So there's lots of men who came to say hello to the queen and came some good words. Yeah, and also a lot of uh, things were going on. And, and the new scareback hunt <laughs> is living in there. Uh, under that, we have the wine key and beer room where they stores all the fine wines. And one man has maybe <laughs> taken a little to drink. He's enjoying himself down there. Yeah, enjoying it a lot. So that's also fun. And yeah. Then we have the stairs up to the upper floor. There's, so you also have to go up in the castle because you cannot just have a room laying out mm -hmm. up here if you're not going to get up to it. So I figured there must also be some stairs. And I think it turned out really good. That stairs. Uh, yeah. So it's going all the way down from the dungeon to the top in the castle. Then we have the living quarters, I think. No, yeah. Eating room where you're going to in. eat everything. And under that, we have the kitchen where there also are a little bit stairs you can go to. Uh, yeah. So that's also a lot of things because you want to really also make your men feel good when they go into battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well that's a fantastic series of rooms. Yeah. So as as you planned out this castle, did you just kind of start building or did you have kind of sketches? I know you said you wrote down yeah. what you wanted. I wrote down everything. Okay. Then I would make a model uh, 10 times least small okay. uh, where I have make every room some uh, in small miniature. Uh, figure out where uh, one room was just one tube on two big or uh, everything and then it was just ten times bigger. Okay, so you did a smaller scale model first to kind of make it all work. Smaller scale, uh, so everything works and then I also could take something apart. That's also why I have made it so every room I can take out and change with the other room if I want to. Uh, so it's not just uh, something like this room have to be one by two and fit this place, but I can take it and use it other place. Mm -hmm. But mostly there are some doors who are not going to fit well together if I'm going to do that now. <laughs> so that's also something I need to make sure of what's going to be yeah. good. Yeah. And then what do we have on the, the inside of the castle yeah, here, kind of the courtyard? We have uh, a little horse stable where they can get the horse good food and the places. I want it actually to make it bigger because there's going to be 
more horses, but uh, I think that I uh, got was fit well. Uh, so else we just have some series and a little uh, well where they can get water, fresh water. Uh, so they don't also have to, don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, excellent work with the castle. Now we'll move back out to the the city part. Yeah, and check out this side. Yeah. Then we have first we have uh, yeah beautiful mountain landscapes downhill. Um, but else we have the sea, sea dragon who <laughs> have to listen say here I am I and I protect this place. Mm -hmm. So also good. And that's my fix. I have it with me every year. I have to take this dragon with me. <laughs> so He's kind of in the moat almost protecting yeah. the castle. Yeah, it's very good. And yeah, then we came to the a little water mill, a uh, blacksmith who have this water mill that's taken and make uh, weapons from the uh, yeah, armory and the castle and every other who want it. So yeah, and then we have a little more about the city normal scale docks and uh, making uh, new ships. Yeah, I love the work in progress ship yeah. there. You can kind of see the whole coming together. That's very good and I use uh, many different uh, techniques of that. Seen a lot of different ships built. <laughs> so it's a lot uh, inspired by it. Yeah, also because I want to make it look like there's also something they are building on and moving on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then we have the gates out to the other part, or the water gate, where the ship can stay out and they can protect the ship even more. <laughs> so they just raise the bridge if there are someone who came inside the castle or town first, then they can protect that. Yeah, and then we came to the last house, I think, maybe. The news house I've made. So that's uh, lots of cheese slopes, and that's built between my, me and my dad. I built the roof and mostly of uh, yeah the roof and the tower. Uh, my dad built all, all the other things downstairs yeah. and, and figure out the moving parts in this house. Uh, so that's and figure out the gates how it has to be. So it's very good. Yeah, yeah. I, I love how you, you got more movement up here, kind of yeah. lifting the crates up and down, yeah, the different balconies and everything. Yeah, it's make a uh, good uh, moving and good attraction of people. <laughs> so there's something moving. That's always good. I love it. My dad also loves it, so it's very good. And then we came to the market, uh, yeah, where I figured there also need to be the local shop sales, uh, main where the farmer can come into the city and sell his pumpkins or other things what he now make and we have this uh, little feast going on <laughs> yeah where there's lots of eating taking place everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> you even while the war goes on yeah, yeah, the war goes on <laughs> everyone wants to have food <laughs> always so yeah and, and then that takes us out to the final section here yeah then we go out to the farm again uh, built by my dad uh, so it's very farm life uh, tree Houses, yeah, and a little pig stable. So it's gonna have to have a lot of uh, things you create on a farm again. Yeah, and I will. So it just have also this farming life that was that time mm -hmm. and was much popular at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the, that whole layout is just absolutely amazing. So how long would you say you've been working on the, the whole thing to prepare it for the show here? The show I prepare for a day to set up. Uh, but uh, still uh, building this uh, uh, about a year, I think. A year? Okay. Yeah, the castle is a half year and the city is a half year. <laughs> so it's uh, been a lot of time. Yeah. But and and it's such a such a long layout. Uh, when, you, when you're when you working on this at home, do you just work on it in sections or can you have it all set up together at once? I Mostly but just in sections. Uh, sometimes I have it all set up in one spot. Mostly just in sections. Uh, because that's very hard to get it all up and set up one at a time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mostly sections. So yeah. yeah. And well, fantastic work. Thank you so much for taking us through the whole layout. And I appreciate you bringing it to the show here at Scareback. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Kevin Hall, and I'm a professional Lego brick artist. So this is my job to actually design and build models and get commissioned to build them all around the world. 
And this is actually the Disney Beauty and the Beast castle. So it's a replica of the original 1991 movie. And um, it's basically about half a million bricks. It took six months to build. It's 2.2 meters high. Um, the tiles in the roof, there's 40,000 tiles in the roof. And each roof took about two days to, to actually build. So, and it's got some animation as well. The Beauty and the Beast actually turned around on the dance floor and it's got lights and LEDs in it as well. So, yeah, it's, it, it was about six months of my life. Well, well done after today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it turned out incredible. This is, this is amazing. So when you start on a massive project like this, where do you start then as far as kind of the first area that you start and then kind of build from there? Well, it's about a month worth of actually planning and watching the movie over and over again and freeze framing it and look at different sculptures and other models that, um, you know, that you can get at Disneyland and things. And then, then actually do my own interpretation of it and then planning out where all the actual built, you know, the rooms are going to go and where everything's actually going to sit. And then because I'm also a graphic designer and um, so I can actually visualize what it's going to look like and I'll free build it from that and actually build it up and then add all the details to it as well. Okay, yeah, that's that's really impressive. And I know I've talked to people in the past who've done builds like this, and they sometimes get the original artwork or blueprints or something like that. Did you have anything like that, or was it pretty much just the movie that you based this? No, it's it's based from the actual okay. movie and from different illustrations and okay. and things like like the actual mosaic that I've got is actually from the actual new movie that's coming out. So that's the new logo for it. Um, but um, yeah, everything's based on images, photos, still frames, and everything else from the original movie. Right. Yeah. And so I, I love what you've done here with the roofs, especially. How did, how did that technique work? And kind of how, how did you come up with that? Well, I wanted to do something different that wasn't brick built. It wasn't slopes or anything like that. And I wanted to use the actual tiles, so like real tiles. So I did a few prototypes. And this is actually Lego tubing, 3 mil tubing. And then with clips, literally clipped on. So 40,000 tiles put onto a clip and then clipped on, which is why it took about two weeks just to do the roofs. Wow. So, and then each one is offset by, you know, with the jumper, half a um, brick in. So then it goes for those um, really nice angles. And then you can get the different curves as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So I'm sure that, that took quite some time, like you said. How does this build break down then for kind of moving it around or how does that work? Well, every roof comes off separately and then that gets bubble wrapped up and boxed. And then the, the actual tower breaks into two and the back tower comes off. So everything's all modular and then the whole thing splits right in half. So the back section and front section and then the sides actually all come off as well. So it ends up each main section is only about 600 mils wide. So then it'll actually fit through a doorway if I need to. And then it's on a block of wood and then it gets um, crated up and put onto pallets and put on the back of a truck. Another thing I noticed is a lot, of, a lot of windows in here. So what was your technique for that, for, get, for getting those windows built? Well, there's about 120 windows in there. Um, I did a few prototypes first, actually an LDD first. Um, and then that was literally, I wanted to do it something simple so I could replicate it mm -hmm. through the whole thing as well. So it's literally just basic windows in the back and then with the arches in the front. And it was actually, um, uh, there are actually ice creams on top okay. to give that detail as well, because it's a, like a Baroque feel, which is a French um, Baroque castle, basically. Right, right. That's really neat. And I guess, you know, you've obviously probably done some fairly big size builds over the years uh, as a brick artist and everything. What's, what do you find is the hardest part about doing builds that are this big? Um, well, I've actually done a lot bigger than this as well. Um, I've, done, I've done the world's largest flag in Dubai, which was 3.1 meters. <laughs> this is only 2.2. Right. So, and I have did a, um, a replica of Legoland Dubai, which was 4 meters by 4 meters. Wow. Yeah. Um, but it depends, like each model is different. So I think the more the engineering in this was hard because I had to design from the bottom knowing that as I go up it had to support itself, had to be modular and everything had to line up. And with something that's 1.5 meters wide, when I'm doing windows on one side, I had to make sure they also lined up on the other side to make it realistic so it's believable as well. So it was a matter of literally a lot of planning, a lot of building going, that has to line up with here and then putting all the supports inside and making, literally building like height sticks so I could take on one side and then bring it to the other side so I know it's exactly the same height as well. While I was actually building this as well, which took six months, I was in the between, I also do workshops as well for kids, plus I do other commission jobs, which unfortunately I can't tell you about at the moment. <laughs> um, and I did the latest, um, some models for the latest book for DK, for the official Lego book. So doing those models and this and that as well. So it keeps me very, very busy. Okay, and so was this just a fun project for you or was this a commission or something or how did that work? No, this is a mock, okay. basically, yeah. So, because I, for the last few years, I've been doing lots of commission jobs and I used to work at Legoland as well. 
um, and basically I wanted okay, I loved I've built lots of castles in the past and I'm quite famous for building castles and I wanted to do something and I've got a love for Disney as well so I put both of them together and build a Disney castle and so I wanted to do something authentic as well and something everyone's built like Sleeping Beauty and Cinderella Castle and I want to do something different and especially the Beauty and the Beast castle was very iconic so and now the movie's coming out next year as well which I didn't I actually didn't plan those I just oh, I want to build that and then by the way the movie's coming out so well that worked out well <laughs> <laughs> there you go and so you mentioned you built a lot of castles what do you think of the new uh, Disney castle Lego just released as a set oh it's a brilliant set um, actually a friend of mine Marcus designed it okay. um, but the the details once I love detail and it's those little details with the models I build like this that once you build it and then step back and if it comes to life and actually becomes real then you know you've done a really good job and with the new Lego um, Disney castle it's the same there's so much detail in it that it literally comes to life as well yeah well, that's awesome yeah I think I think it's a great kit as well but you did an amazing job with this so I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me thank you no, happy to talk <laughs> Hi, I'm Dario Benetti, and uh, this is my castle, Seven Towers. When I first joined Garden Slug about 2011, um, you know, I, we, uh, we don't want to build sets for, the, for these shows, so I was like, oh, I know, I'll build a castle. And uh, this is kind of what happened. Uh, it took me about a year to make. 
It's roughly uh, 80,000 pieces, and it comes apart in 28 sections for me to set up here. Very impressive. Real quick, for people who aren't familiar with what Garden Slug is, uh, well, what is that? Is that like, how, how does that work? Okay, well, uh, a lug is a LEGO users group, so we're an official lug, and since we're the Garden State lug, we are Garden Slug. Okay, That's kind of where the name evolved from. There you go, and so you've got a number of the builders from that group that are displaced up here at the show. That's correct, yeah, we have, uh, I think we have nine of our builders here today. So fantastic, so let's dive into the build here then. So there's so much gray in this, in this build, which is crazy. Talk about how you collected that much and where you got all those pieces from. Well, a lot of the pieces came from the Lego store where they have the, the wall in the back where they, you can just buy it by the cup. Uh, also, when I was building this set, it was when Lord of the Rings was very popular and the, the Lego had Lord of the Rings sets out. So I was buying a lot of the Lord of the Rings sets and then selling the minifigures to help kind of offset the cost of the uh, bricks. So I was getting the bricks for free, basically. Yeah, perfect. That's the way to do it. That's how you get a, a castle of this size. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because I don't have that kind of money, believe me. <laughs> So uh, once we go inside the walls, what, what do we have kind of happening inside the castle here? Okay, so this is the joust scene that's taking place in the back of the castle. And originally when I built the castle, um, there was, it was one section less in the back. The camera guy's over there. But it was one section less, so the back of the castle was, was much smaller, which made the joust scene much smaller. So when I started building those uh, knight's tents, I built several of them. So I had to make the back of the castle bigger, so I added a wall section to extend the back so I could have a bigger joust scene and make it, you know, flesh it out a little bit. Right, really improved that scene there. So what was the tent design like for you? I like how you kind of varied the colors there. Yeah, I based it off all the horse bartings that LEGO makes, so I had to try to get one of, at least one of every horse barding that they ever made. And then I just tried to match the tent colors to the bartings. And I think you captured the colors very nicely. So is the castle itself based off any real castle or just kind of something you got straight out of your imagination? It's, uh, it's loosely based on a book called Castle by David McCauley. And he follows a fictitious king on how the whole castle creation is, is done. It would, it would have been done in medieval times. So I kind of based the footprint and the layout on that loosely. But then the actual design of the walls, I just kind of went from my own imagination. And as we move further into the defensive structures here, what, what do we have going on inside this section? Well, inside there, there's a couple of buildings. There's a residence that has the big red and brown roof there. And then the gray building with the black roof is like a, a kitchen dining area. And then closest to us when the, in the yellow is um, the horse stables. You captured a lot of the different details of kind of the castle life in here. Yes, I tried to. I tried to make it as realistic as possible. I know a lot of the guys in my group give me grief because there's no dragon on this castle. <laughs> but I tried to make it a realistic castle. It's not, it's not a fantasy castle at all. Right. Is there interiors on the, the towers and the keep area? There is not. They are hollow just because I wanted to save on that money. And it would also be hard to display in a, in a setup like this. Sure. So do you know the dimensions of the whole layout as a whole? It is roughly 10 by 10. It's a little short, so maybe 10 by 9 or so, something like that, yeah. <laughs> That's quite the undertaking. What's set up like for you? Is that a massive process when you bring this to show, or do you, do you have it in a way that you can do it pretty quickly? Well, like I said, it is modular, so and I have all the pieces numbered, so I know where they go, but there's always some damage when I get here that I have to repair, and I have to set up all the men and everything. So it takes me a good four hours to set it up here at the show. Yeah, that's not bad for a layout of this size. <laughs> I guess it's not too bad. <laughs> so you've got a few different kind of armies of, of minifigs going on here. Uh, what are the different factions doing? Well, my idea was that this was like a special force here, the green archers on the side here. Oh, I can start in the front here. That, that I planned to be just like a, a visiting king that was coming for the, the, the jousting tournament. That was my plan there. It wasn't, it's not really a battle scene at all. So that's the visiting king and his little, uh, his little army there. And then the, the archers over here, I just, I just imagine them as being some like, special force that you know, was, was being trained and set up there. Keep I an just, eye on the water. Yeah, I just like the minifigures too. <laughs> it's like, how can I use these in the castle? <laughs> yeah, that is a cool minifig. So, so what is the, the biggest challenge for you when building a castle of this size and kind of getting this layout all together? What were some of the, the challenges you had to overcome with building this? Well, aside from acquiring all the pieces, I mean, it was difficult with 
you know, just I would forget like where I put the archway, like how high I put it, and you know where the where the openings were for the arrow slits, and I'd have I would build, and then it'd be like, oh my, that's off one row, so I'd have to go back, take it apart, and put it all back together. So that was kind of the frustrating thing, and I made some weird decisions as far as like the dimensions of some of the towers and stuff, like they don't fit on one base plate, so I had to cut base plates. Like I don't know, I made I made odd decisions, but I, I guess it all worked out in the end. But yeah. and that's kind of the learning process. The more you do that, exactly, exactly, yep. So when you have this at your house, do you have room to keep the whole thing built like this, or is it always kind of taken apart in sections? No, it gets taken apart. It, it gets boxed up. And I, I tell everyone that asks me that my wife doesn't allow me to do that. She'll, she'll, be, she'll be thrilled that I said that on video. <laughs> there are limits to some things. She's very supportive and understanding, too, I have to say that. <laughs> that's, that's in the contract. For the record. <laughs> yeah, no, it gets boxed up. I have one spare room in my house that I have to keep all my Lego stuff in. So. That's, uh, that's kind of the deal. She's like, you can have as much as you want as long as it fits in that one room. There you go. So do you want to expand on this idea in the future with more castle medieval type builds? Uh, my next big project that I'm working on is one of the castles from Game of Thrones. It's uh, the Red Keep. Yeah. So I'm working on that. I wanted to have it done by this show, but I just ran out of time. So hopefully for the next show I'll have it. Thank you so much for putting the time and effort into this massive layout and bringing it out to the show here. I think it's been uh, very popular with the crowd as they walk by, so thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, my name is Joseph Zawada. Um, I'm 19 years old and I built Hyrule Castle. Uh, I've been working on it for two and a half years. The roof design, um, because of the weird angle and the octagonal round shape, it kind of makes it difficult. Since Legos are blocks, it's kind of hard to mimic a round shape. So a lot of effort and time was put into that. Um, also, I worked hard on the vegetation to try to get it all to stick and look as if it was really growing off of the castle and make it organic as possible. Yeah. Was there any particular inspiration for this build? or how, What did you use base this off of? Yeah, um, it's based off of a video game, uh, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, uh, which is my favorite game in the franchise, so I wanted to recreate the iconic castle in it. Very cool, and this is such a huge build. Uh, where did you start with this when you're starting to build like this? Was there a particular like drawing, or how did you decide plan this out? Um, I based it off of how many base plates I could get my hands on, and then after that, it just grew from there. Um, I had to bump up the size a couple of times because when I was working on the towers, I made them too big, but I liked them too much, so it just kept on growing and growing and growing until it got a little bit out of hand. Okay. So what's the inside of these towers like in the big tower in there? Uh, the big towers are made out of the, I think, 4x6 or 4x5 prefab turrets found in the castle sets with a mix of Technic bars and plates and pins. Um, the exterior towers, the smaller ones, are just hollow and they're connected with uh, click hinges. Yeah, and something I noticed on a lot of the towers is you've got a lot of really nice tile work going on there. How did you decide to do that? Um, they were a pick-a-brick element at the time. <laughs> And I didn't get nearly as many as I thought, so I had to brick link them from a place in Scandinavia. So lots of money went into that and too many pieces. Yeah, and I, I think it turned out really nice. And I see you've got kind of the, the island here with like some rock work. Is that structurally pretty strong in there? Yeah, um, it's the rock work is just on the outside. And then the inside, again, is more uh, prefab pieces okay. and technic. What's this breakdown like for moving it to a show? Uh, it comes apart into about 40 pieces. All the towers and roofs lift off, and the island splits apart into four different segments. Uh, it takes about two cars to get here, but it's pretty sound, which is nice. Yeah, and this is amazing. So, uh, what, I mean, when you first started thinking about this project, uh, what is some of the most difficult, uh, difficult parts about it? Because obviously you spent like uh, two and a half years on it, such a huge build. What's yeah. some of the difficult parts for you? Um, from the very beginning, my major concern was the top roof piece, because it's such a weird shape. And also, because it's based off of a game that I love so much, I wanted to recreate it as close to the original design as possible. So I think those were the two major difficulties with it. So you wanted to be as faithful to you know the, the source materials possible. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, well, that's really cool. Thanks for telling us about the build. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Hi, my name is Bob Carney, and uh, I build uh, medieval castles out of uh, Lego blocks. Uh, offering for Brickworld 2015 is the uh, castle of the Prince of Wales, Charles, uh, second in line for the, well, actually first in line for the throne of England. Uh, and uh, the castle is called Carnarfon. It's located in the village of Carnarfon in uh, North Wales. Initially built uh, from uh, approximately 12 
uh, 77 to 1292. This is the uh, Eagle Tower. Uh, unfortunately, Lego doesn't make any small sitting eagles, so uh, I consulted with my uh, uh, consultant at uh, uh, Cadu in Cardiff, Wales, and we decided that it would be better to ring the uh, Eagle Tower with uh, dark gray Lego parrots rather than Harry Potter owls. <laughs> I think that the parrot can pass more as any kind of bird almost, Ex right? Exactly, yeah, yes. Very nice. Uh, so the original castle began with the Eagle Tower and went to the Queen's Tower, the Chamberlain's Tower, with the Great Hall uh, just across the wall, uh, then the Black Tower, the Cistern Tower, the Queen's Gate, and the northeast tower at the corner over there and that was the original castle uh, until it was uh, captured by the Welsh in uh, approximately uh, 1293. Okay, very cool. So now, uh, one of the things about a build this large is that it would be near impossible to transport it uh, together. So uh, how does it break down for transit if it does? There are uh, six major pieces. Uh, since the uh, tables here are not uh, particularly level, uh, the uh, splits uh, are fairly easy to see. Uh, not nearly as easy to see at home uh, where my table's uh, completely flat. Uh, the uh, Queen's Gate was entered through a very tall ramp, uh, which I did not reproduce. Okay. Uh, now uh, there's currently a balcony so uh, visitors can look out over the town. Hi, I'm Andrew Spangler and this is my build Itter Castle. And basically, I started off, I wanted to make a castle and have it be related to World War II. And so I searched, and there's only a few castles that actually participated in World War II, and this was one of them. It's actually one of the most interesting because the French, Germans, and Americans all fought alongside each other against the SS. So here you can basically see the SS are all, all along the sides fighting the defenders on the inside. And Interesting. So if you can give some more, I guess, of that backstory and why the French, Germans, and Americans ended up together fighting against other Germans. So the castle is in Tyrol, Austria. So right when World War II broke out, the Germans invaded all their surrounding countries. So they took over the, the castle and then they took all the French high up officials, VIPs, and then they were held in the castle. And then towards the end of the war, it was about for some days before the war actually ended, a French Olympic tennis player escaped from the castle and then the other prisoners, they told him, go find an American battalion. They ended up running into a German battalion, but they wanted to surrender. So they both ended up going and finding a, an American battalion and then the, the Germans to prove that, well, prove their surrender, make themselves look a little bit better they offered their services to the, to the Americans and French. So they all came back. There was only a few guards and such, so they took over the castle pretty easily. But then a SS battalion ended up coming to try to retake the castle. And so the battle basically took place, I think it was three days before the war completely ended. So the SS would have been these more hardcore German troops that didn't want to surrender and they were going to like the last man at the end of the war? Yeah, the, the fanatics, okay. the ones Hitler completely brainwashed and stuff. Mm -hmm. well, very interesting. So if you can take us through some more of the build then. It, one thing I noticed is the great minifigs. Do you want to talk about kind of the designs, those, and where that came from? So the minifigures are pretty much all custom. I took Roglin's decals. I decaled basically all. I think there's only one... Uh, pr br Brickmania printed figure. All the other ones are decaled and then all the brick arms are painted. I tried to paint all the the brick arms vests as well and then a few of the the minifigures are they have the decal underneath and then I painted on top of that. So that's those are more of the SS the ones that are have the most paint on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they turned out really great. And then the castle itself here and kind of the bridge, if you can talk about some of your techniques with that, there's a lot of little details in there. I, uh, I try to, I've had these three specific techniques or pieces that I used. I used the masonry bricks, 
Then the one by one studs mixed with the two or one by two plates made a one by three brick with out of those. And then I used the one by one with the, the stud on the side and then some tiles. And I just basically are also with a few other things like one by one round bricks. And I took all those pieces and then I stuck with those and throughout the the whole castle I'll just use those those pieces to give it that more detailed look. And as you were working on this, uh, what kind of like sources and inspiration did you use? Like photos of the castle? Does the castle still exist today? Yeah, the castle still does exist. It's a private castle, so there's not quite as ma many pictures as I would have liked. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the pictures were only of the front up view of the castle, so I think that's what I got the most accurate. So I, I basically mainly went off pictures. So I, I think I got the front of it pretty good off of pictures. The back was more just trying to make sure it matched the front, and yeah. Yeah. What's the interior like, sort of the structure inside there? Oh, the structure inside, it's completely hollow. The, the main keep itself, that has the most supports on. It's got a lot of filler brick on the inside. And then the other ones have some supports, but they're mainly leaning into each other or into, onto the, the main keep. Yeah, well, very good. I think the build turned out really nice. Another thing you've got is some really good kind of landscaping and trees. Can you talk about kind of the, your hill technique and the tree technique? Well, I actually, I started off, I did most of the landscaping, partly because I didn't want to, I was un, kind of unsure about the castle, so I was doing more familiar grounds, doing the landscaping. So I did a lot of that first. It, so the outside is pretty much just basic one stud high plus a plate or one, not one side, one brick high with a plate on top. And then we'll go, uh, as it goes in, there's basically just some, some plating with columns underneath. So, and then I slowly just have that step up in about a brick high each going up. And then after that, uh, there's a lot of just different colors underneath. And then I started covering those up with the, the color plating and then evened it out on the top. And yeah. so the top is pretty much just covered and underneath are just columns underneath. Wor worked out very nice. So for people who are interested, how did the story end? What kind of happened to the defenders and the attacking Germans? Well, so the battle went on. The Americans and French and Germans, they ended up starting to lose, but they sent for reinforcements and since it was basically the end of the war, three days after it, the war ended, okay. uh, and another American battalion came in and basically just got the SS to leave or mm -hmm. defeated them. So the Americans, Germans, French, they did end up winning the battle. Well, there you go. I think it's an amazing build and I love the story behind it. It's really interesting. Kind of one of those small episodes from World War II that's it's fascinating to study. So thank you. I appreciate you bringing this build to Brickworld. My name is Bob Weiss. And uh, what I, when I start, I have no idea what I'm going to do beyond a very simple, I'm going to have a town uh, with uh, battlements around it and then a castle that's actually a castle with room inside. And so I, st I laid out the base plates. I have a place where I can get it out this big and I looked at it for a month. And then I decided I better do a moat. So I made the moat leaving enough room here on this side for an attack. And then I just start putting in, I, put the, I do it layer by layer. I put uh, the walls around and then I put the houses in, uh, the first row of houses next to the wall. And then I did the second layer of houses. And I originally thought I'd have more town and I realized I needed more room for the castle. So I reduce that down and then I wanted to keep it low last year's castle was an island uh, that was really high up so kids couldn't see it and so I wanted this to be lower so they could see inside and see what was going on inside the castle too and so then I said okay then I'll make a second round of uh, battlements around it and then you look at it what am I going to do next okay I want to make some uh, round bastions and I wanted to put uh, a church with uh, the lights have kind of gone out but with stained glass windows 
and I wanted to make it you know, like an interior of a castle with buildings. So I made this next, and then this was the last part, and I didn't have much room, but I knew I wanted to have uh, round towers coming out from the corners. That's what I did. And so last year was the first year I used a combination of the a masonry profile and plates with the sand green in it and so I don't and the um, uh, snot with uh, tiles uh, of, of different uh, uh, depths. Yeah, kind of get that tile jutting out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, and there's two different kinds, the, the, the snot and then the, the uh, one by one with one stud on it so there's they're different depths and so those I leave put together that's how I make my walls and will continue. And so when it was done, then I look at it for a while and I put in the landscaping and built the trees. And then I only put, the, I didn't know what I was going to do for the men or anything until I get here. <laughs> so that's what I did. It took about seven months and uh, uh, it was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. So you're very much kind of making up as you go along, just I, kind of whatever strikes you at that, whatever point you are in the build. Yes, I have no idea what's going to come next. It's just... Well, I mean, like I put in these bastions. I knew that because I had uh, very specific, those are specific pieces. And I'm just realizing I didn't finish the way I was, there was supposed to be tiles on top on all of them. And I never got, I never noticed. But anyway, I, I you know, it's like those are kind of cool looking, uh, the, the, the turret tops. And so I put in bastions all the way around just so I could use those. So yeah, you've got a ton of cool minifigs here. Some of these are older knights pieces and stuff. So talk about some of the pieces you use well, for the different okay. factions. I, okay, well, I started collecting Lego when my son was six and he's 34. Okay, it was his Lego originally. Okay. And so the blue pieces are uh, from 20 years ago and the, the red here are from 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so those were from castle sets I bought for him. And then uh, the um, these kings, whatever they're called, are from recent sets. I bought a chess set to add to these, and I don't know where the green guys came from. You know, from various sets. I don't buy mini figures just to buy them to go like some of these guys down here. <laughs> these are just what I get in sets, okay. uh, and I keep. But then I like I bought all these helmets to make them more uniform. Uh, and last year's build, the castle that was the Castle of Islands was supposed to be cold. So I bought from my, my friend Dave all of these capes. And I just figured, except for the, I had to take them off for the archers because it doesn't work with a quiver to have a cape. Kind of hard to get under the cape to get the arrow out. And so I redid those. But other, and then these are from Jordan Larson, who's the co-castle coordinator with me, theme coordinator. He supplied some. I don't, I don't jam them together like some people do. That's kind of more the younger people's style, and I like to kind of spread them out and leave room. I, I might have done more, but you know this was enough. Yeah. And then take us through some of the different houses and kind of the town portion that's within the walls here. Well, they come apart, most of them. I mean, I, I real I forgot some of the earlier ones didn't come apart. So what I've done over the years is collect un uh, unusual colors like dark green and uh, there's, there's old brown like right there and there's old, the old uh, gray. So I, I can vary the colors. So every what I'm trying to do with every house is vary it. And what I did this year, because I'd gotten during the year a lot of these decorative pieces, you know, the round, and there's round and uh, kind of angled uh, like an a arrowhead. And so on every house this year, the decoration is something like that, almost every house. And so when I came here and I brought it, the buildings had gotten mixed up. And I'm thinking, oh, no, I won't be able to remember how to put them back together. But these are wider, those are the widest over there, so I could sort them by how wide or narrow they were. And then, you know, and then, then you just mix the colors up. So that's, and, and then I was also mixing up the roofs because I use 
the old slopes, but as you can see, this is very popular because it's more real. Uh, and so I was doing some like that and then some not. And like I said, some of these, you know, and this was the first one where I realized I couldn't build and I went, wait a minute, I can take them apart was because these are, as you can see, this is where one of the sections is that comes apart. And so I realized, hey, I don't have to fasten them down. I can just do that because I did that before, a couple of years ago. That works really well. So you referenced uh, your, your castle build last year, and I believe you've bought a number of castles to BrickCon over the years. Oh, yeah. So kind of, what is it about kind of castle building and that theme in general that really appeals to you and you just keeps drawing you back every year? Uh, when I was six or seven, I got a metal, a metal castle set with plastic figures. And I, I'm actually, uh, all my college work and graduate work was in history. Okay. So I've always loved castles. I, I don't know, maybe it was originally with that set. Uh, I had a Fort Apache set and a castle set. And I was tempted when they came out with the cavalry stuff, but I'd already had too much castle <laughs> stuff. And so for me, I find uh, it, it, it's, they're interesting in the sense that it combines my interest in architecture and art and Lego, because when I, when I work in wood with stuff, making things, if I make a mistake, I gotta start all over again and I have to go get another piece of wood. <laughs> with Lego, I can take it apart. And, I've, and that, I can't tell you how many times I've been like up to here and then gone all the way back down because I figured, uh-oh, something's not right. And that's what's great about it. So uh, when I was in Europe, uh, we took a, a boat trip down the Rhine and I took picture after picture of castles and I had one uh, on the Moselle River that I took about a hundred pictures of, and then I realized when I did Mont Saint Michel three, uh, two years ago, I don't like recreating reality. That's much too hard to do. <laughs> it's so much easier to do it with your imagination and and come up with whatever you want. So this is completely made up, and uh, <coughs> I'll do the same. I'll do something smaller next year because I've, I've committed to a collaborative build with the pirates to make a fortress. Okay, that should be cool. But I think castles really do lend themselves well to that style you were talking about where you just kind of make it up as you go along yeah, because yeah. there's so many cool and unique things you can do. Yes. Yeah, and that, with this I wanted to have three layers. You know, the outer curtain wall uh, with the town in between. Uh, if I hadn't run out of time, I would have put more people in there. But it's like, you can barely see it. And then I wanted you know, the inner keep, uh, and that's where it stops being a castle and it becomes kind of fantasy, right. you know, that you wanted things to come out. And one of my styles also has always been to use arches to create uh, that movement out like that. So I've really, I, this has been uh, a lot of fun. And another, like, I had these pieces that are usually part of space but I, I collect them because I know I, I can use them in round towers. Uh, and this one is one, one bigger and this one's one smaller. Uh, so uh, I built those just so I could use these pieces for the ropes. <laughs> there you go. Sometimes you just got that perfect piece and you want to put yeah, it in yeah, there. I forgot what to do with it. Yeah, I got to do something with it. <laughs> Otherwise, why do I have it? Exactly. Well, fantastic layout here. I'm so glad you've continued with the castle builds. Can't wait to see what you do with the Pirates next year as well. That should be great. So thanks for taking us through the layout. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Thank you. My name is Ben Pitchford, and we're here with Arendelle Castle based on the Frozen movie. I've got my three kids, and uh, this one is especially for my young daughters who are dressed up as uh, Elsa and Anna, and then my oldest, Olaf, here. I love it. You've got the cosplay to go along with the awesome build here. Yeah, it was totally... Uh, you know, my wife's idea and something my uh, kids were excited for. Max was a little reluctant and embarrassed at first, but we talked him into putting on the uh, Ralphie costume look-alike. Let's dive into the build here as well and kind of talk about the process of building this. Yeah, so it originally was not supposed to be nearly as big, but it just kept growing. Starting with the castle, um, some friends of ours had a, a Disney book that uh, had some angles that shed some light, especially the backside that we couldn't get from the movie. So it is pretty... Uh, uh, close to, to what it looks like in the film. Um, but we started off with the front gate and um, and then it just kept growing and growing and then the mountain had to, had to grow, you know, proportionately. So um, originally I was gonna have it um, two, two base plates 
uh, not not as wide, but uh, I had to make the mountain kind of surrounding the, the castle. So you kind of make the mountain adapt to whatever size the castle ended up. Correct, yeah, and, and I didn't want it to be, you know, that large originally, but it, it turned out great and we got it here. A little hard to transport something like this. It's, it is a modular build, so we have a seam going down the middle of the mountain and then three seams in, uh, along the front, so that breaks down into six sections. And the castle is about six or seven sections as well. Okay. And talk a little bit more about some of the construction elements of the castle. I noticed the walls there really stand out and then some of the, the ways that you did the, the roof elements as well. Yeah, I mean, just a lot of hinge plates and uh, wedges to try to tuck up some of the angles. Um, definitely uh, a challenge there trying to replicate that because there's so many, you know, tall arches and towers, and it's like, holy cow, how many towers can the, can you build? But um, and then and then the ship was a little bit of a challenge too. But we took uh, an old classic Caribbean clipper uh, pirate theme um, classic ship, and then we used the sails and uh, the hull from that. So I thought it turned out we could we wanted to do a port and some more ships, but uh, kind of ran out of time and space. Uh, it, you know, originally the castle was four months to build, which was a, took a while, and then I kind of crammed the mountain to about a four-month build, also just because it was like, you know, we're running out of time for the show. But yeah, the mountain is incredible. There is a backdrop to the castle, so large. If we can maybe go to the back a little bit and kind of look at what the yep. the structure is like there, so. Point out, there are five waterfalls, and we have it lit up with uh, LED lights. And um, a lot of those waterfalls you might have seen in previous builds. You know, we do a large build every year. Last year it was Robin Hood. The year before that was uh, Samurai Code, and the three years ago was Rivendell. And those were kind of based on you know things that my son was into. This one was finally something my girls for my girls because they're you know big fans of the movie. And um, so, anyways, we took the the waterfalls from previous builds and then just slightly tweaked them to fit this build. So we also took, if anybody recognizes from last year, uh, this uh, stairway was originally in Robin Hood and we were able to piece that into this build and kind of save some some time by using some larger chunks from previous builds. But what yeah. it works well kind of repurpose some stuff then. Yeah exactly. So walking around there is obviously a little bit of table just to save on uh, save on Lego but uh, for the most part we have uh, like I said, three three sections that you can see the seams running up. Lots of uh, uh, burps and lerps, especially lerps. lerps. Um, to, and that really is the secret to, to the structure for, for this size of a build. So you um, kind of start with those those kind of standard Lego rock and mountain pieces, and then you kind of build off the detailing on the front from there. Exactly. So you, you, know, you can kind of see here... Um, our, you know, we, we kind of make a perimeter starting on the bottom. We have our first lerp, which is hard to see because it's light gray. But then you take two steps back and you just keep following that pattern and covering it with slopes and wedges to give it that aesthetics. But uh, it, this is what, you know, keeps it together and holds it for support. There is a, a secret uh, hidden Olaf and in addition to the one that's floating up front. So the secret, you know, hidden one for the treasure hunt We'll bring this to the Children's Museum when we're done in uh, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and then uh, have a treasure hunt, and that'll be one of the items that kids will have fun looking for. Yeah, I'm sure this will be a big hit with them. So, yeah, this is an excellent build here. How long does it take you to set up a build like this when you get to the show? So it, I think we got here around noon yesterday, which was late, and um, by the time we were done, it was maybe 3.30. But uh, that was only because we had a little bit of an issue um, with some with some uh, breakage on the castle, maybe added a half hour, but not terrible. Last year, I think it took me eight hours to set up, so I was much happier with this. Although transporting it is still a beast, especially with that humidity. But uh, we got it here. My name is Frazier, and I've just castles always been my favorite theme since I was a kid. So I built this base for another uh, mock uh, a couple of years ago, and I when I finished that, got done with that, I thought, man, this would make a great base for a big fantasy castle just and I thought I wanted something really tall really narrow and as I started building it was surprisingly sturdy and I wanted to see like well maybe how tall could I make this and that kind of became the the big theme is just I wanted like towers on towers on towers <laughs> there you go yeah so when you first started planning how'd you kind of come up with the idea and, and how to take shape in your mind sort of oh man um you know I did some sketches uh early on just some ideas I knew I wanted a garden I knew I wanted um, just a lot of towers, and I'd seen some other mocks in the past with like matching blue roofs, and then the Disney castle came out, 
with matching blue roofs, and I was like, oh, I love their turret idea, so I kind of borrowed some turret ideas from them. Um, I, took, I took some inspiration from like the Lord of the Rings um, Minas Tirith, the White City, for the base, uh, Pilgrim's Progress, parts of the Bible, uh, Dinotopia, which they have a whole scene down there, which I didn't know they were doing. Wow. But I just, uh, there's, so there's a lot of birds on the back that you can't really see from the front. But um, just inspiration. So, but it's not connected to anything. It's not like a TV show or a comic. It's just out of my imagination. Yeah, yeah. So as you build up then, how to kind of work? Did you start building from the bottom up and kind of go from there? And then how did you decide on, so you've got different styles of towers as well. I, I did. And that was one of the things that really was really important to me is that I, I didn't want just an angular build of just all right angles. So I was like, well, how do I, how do, I do something different from that? Uh, so I knew I wanted at least one circular tower, and I was actually inspired by Alice Finch, the famous castle builder with the Hogwarts, and she did that huge uh, tan Hogwarts tower with the, the style of the one by two brick and the, and the cones. So I did that, um, and then uh, I basically angled about half the castle at about a 45 degree angle off the base, which was probably the hardest part of the whole build. Um, it led to a lot of really complex angling in the back, which again, you can't see from the front, but I, that was hours and hours back there, like trying to get these. And I ended up using uh, cheese slopes on their side, um, going all the way up the, to accomplish some of, those, some of those tight angles. But really, really just a lot of, a lot of circular towers use, using, I used the new um, circular tower pieces from the, from the Disney castle. I had to order a few extra of those. Yeah, there you go. So this thing is massive. Do you know how tall the whole build is? It's almost. It's just. A, it's a, a. It's a hair over nine feet. <laughs> wow, and it's just resting on kind of the the clear pieces here in the middle. So talk a little bit more about that structure and what kind of holds this all up. Yeah, you know, what's one of the common questions I get is like, is there, is there a steel beam? And no, it's all Lego, and um, it's not solid. The base isn't solid in here. It's even, you know, it's hollow inside there. There's a there's a four by four post that I built up the middle. Um, and there's no, I mean, it's just brick stacking. It's just, I made sure that the center tower was, the center of gravity was over the main base. But surprisingly, up to this level, it's really sturdy. I just used lots of interlocking plates. Um, and I could, I could sit on it um, when I got it to that level. <laughs> wow, yeah, well, that's good. I'm, I'm sure it needs that strength to hold up the whole thing. <laughs> it's heavy. It's 50 pounds. So when you bring this to a show, does it break down into several sections so it's easier to move around? Unfortunately, yes, it does. I, I, I had to spend about two hours reconstructing it. Uh, to, I had to break it apart enough to cram it in the back of my Jeep uh, to get it here. That wasn't very fun. It was like open heart surgery. It was like, ah, I don't want to take this off. <laughs> exactly. I imagine it's difficult to get the very top put on as well. Is there ladders and things involved? Or? No, just me, my six-foot self on my, on my tiptoes, just very carefully. They were like... 15 people watching when I was like assembling it like well I hope I don't trip <laughs> and then did you make this backdrop here as well um sort of I I bought the paper my sister painted the clouds um and then my dad is in construction so he actually did uh Roy Ratzliff he did the uh the he just got the lumber and, and built the, the backdrop and then my sister is Kelsey Diller she's a local artist actually she's a painter so I don't know how to paint clouds, so I just took it to her. I was like, hey, sister, can you help me out? And she was fine to do it. Family project there. A little bit, yeah. Some help from the family. Yeah, that's awesome. So any thoughts to expand on this in the future, make it taller or anything like that? Or is this about as high as you want to go? You know, my wife's pregnant with our first child. Okay. And I, I told her, like, this is going to be my last hurrah. You know, go out, go out with a bang, you know, big. And then I'm going to put the brick away in storage for a year and, take, and just focus on the baby. But, you know, I have had that fleeting thought of, could I make it taller? You know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Exactly, yeah. Well, uh, thanks for bringing this out to the show. It's really incredible, and I think it's been a big hit with the public here as well with the awesome build. So thanks for talking to me about it. Absolutely. Thanks for the work you guys do. I love, I watch you guys on YouTube. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. My name's Flynn DeMarco, and this is Richard Board, and we built this piece together, and it's called Treasure of the Snake Queen. Um, the story starts here at the bottom of the mock, and goes all the way up the side of the mountain and finishes with an epic battle with the Snake Queen in the, in the top tower room. Uh, so we are uh, running it with two EV3s and there's an Arduino microcontroller to do the sounds and lights. So um, let's go ahead and start the, start the show. Yeah. All right, here we go. 
So here our adventurers are going through the happy village <laughs> at the bottom of the mountain. And they leave with a wizard waving goodbye to them. And they go into the forest, and now they're going to go through the spooky spider forest. <laughs> a fantasy classic. <laughs> I love the armor and the minifig accessories. Oh, thanks. And then, yeah, and then we now they're in the slimy cave with the slime monsters and the slime ghosts. And now they're going to take a trip through the spooky crypt. <laughs> oh, and now they finally left the crypt and they can uh, start in the castle. And here they are, their little dragon battle here. You know, we used all the tropes. Oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> we wanted it to seem familiar and, you know, fairy tale like. And then now, of course, we have the battle with the Snake Queen. And she turns into a skeleton. <laughs> and that's the end. And they have all the treasure there, yeah. And they got the treasure of the Snake Queen. <laughs> Oh, that's incredible with all those moving parts. So if you can maybe just break it down for us kind of level by level and how this idea came together and then how the build kind of came together for oh, you. Sure. Well, uh, after last year, we, when we found out the theme was animation, we really wanted to do something that would uh, move, obviously. But we also wanted to combine uh, animations, uh, like classic animation stuff. And we're both big fans of high fantasy. So we wanted to uh, create a story. And like I said, we did use all the kind of the tropes. But I think uh, it's what makes it seem familiar and recognizable to people. Like they can pick that out. They don't have to think too hard to follow the story, sure. right? Like it can just, like can, it can happen. Um, so, uh, so here we have, um, uh, it's a nine volt track. You can see the nine volt train. And we were able to connect the nine volt train to the EV3 um, and control the motor of the train through that. And then these little guys walking are actually connected to the nine volt train with a power functions motor. So whenever the train goes, they also go. Um, then this, uh, these two uh, uh, conveyor belts are connected together so that they always stay in sync. So they're connected by a chain and they run the same. And then this is a, uh, a third conveyor belt that's run with a sensor. We have multiple sensors inside. So once this thing completes, there's an ultrasonic sensor that reads when the characters come around and then it starts this section. And then we have another ultrasonic sensor that starts the top. And here we have this, uh, the turntable that holds our party. And uh, we have our uh, dragons on a swing arm. And then for the top turntable, it's actually uh, one large turntable uh, powered by round rat gears, uh, the ones they used in the bucket excavator. It's like a four-piece uh, yellow round. Um, two of those sandwiched together with a motor to run it. And then there are two smaller turntables inset inside the larger turntable that gives us the, the Snake Queen battle at the end. Yeah, that's amazing. So was there a lot of experimenting involved in getting all the moving parts to work out as you moved moved up with the build? Yes, definitely. I mean, that was one of the reasons we ended up kind of hooking these two treadmills together was just in an attempt to make sure it was always going to be in sync. Um, and, you know, the uh, programming can sometimes be a little finicky. So um, there was a lot of like trial and error and trying to figure out, OK, how do we get the timing to work out so that everything's going to be synced, especially when you're talking about three completely separate brains, which is what we're doing here. Uh, we tried daisy chaining the EV3s together, but didn't have a lot of success with that. So we decided just to add a couple extra sensors and use it. And so the two EV3s are complete separate entities from each other. And uh, one controls the, the bottom up to, the, to, up to here, and then the, the second one controls this whole top area. Gotcha. So then talk a little bit more about what the structure of this is like, because you've got to incorporate, obviously, all the mountain and the cliffs and everything with all those moving parts. So how did that come together? Uh, well, so we built a structure out of Technic, um, uh, and we just started building a skin on it. You know, we put everything on. We made sure and use uh, to leave lots of outward-facing studs so that we'd be able to, to stick plates on there. And everything was really just sort of like we cobbled it together and then said, OK, how can we cover the spaces where, you know? Um, so we didn't, I have to say, we didn't put a lot of like forethought into how exactly it would all go together. We just kind of said, OK, here's these two things. Let's make them hook up. <laughs> so. 
Exactly. Yeah. Well, it, it turned out great, and I, I love the the whole look of it with the outward facing cliff pieces and everything. Oh, thanks. And then the castle looks amazing as well. So, was there any particular kind of castle inspiration for that, or was it just kind of make something that you thought fit well with the overall scene? Um, a little of both. We were definitely heavily inspired by Maleficent's castle from Sleeping Beauty. Um, that was a big inspiration, and we also just looked at a lot of like you know drawings and paintings of scary castles, <laughs> and we we went with the classic Disney villain colors of green and purple and black. Um, again, you know, we were trying to evoke thoughts and emotions from people, which is why we chose the music that we chose as well. We wanted uh, music that would speak to people and make them feel a certain way when they saw uh, everything coming by. And I think um, Peter and the Wolf is so great for that. And um, also we used Night on Bald Mountain, uh, which was used in Fantasia, which was another heavily uh, big influence for us. And then uh, the Carmina Burana at the end, because we decided we needed whatever the most dramatic piece of classical music we could find, and that was certainly it. <laughs> yeah, well, the whole scene turned out perfect. When you bring this to a show, what's set up like for you guys and getting this doll work together? Well, this is the first time we've brought it anywhere, um, and it was a bit of a difficult process. I think we would probably, I, I think our plan is to, once we're done here, to get it home and start thinking about how we could improve um, its modularity, I don't know if that's a word, but you know, um, in, uh, you know, in our ability to be able to take it apart and move it. But this is um, actually comes apart in four pieces. So these side walls here, here, and this front area here are three separate pieces. The whole top of this comes off, and that's a separate piece. And then uh, it comes down to a three by three base plate square, uh, which is fortunately able to fit in our car. <laughs> That's always an important detail. Uh, yes, I mean we were driving with our knees in our faces, but you know it was uh, we got it here. So, <laughs> and then um, and then just to t uh, wanted to talk a little bit about some of the the art stuff. We both come from theater backgrounds, um, so we used a lot of uh, old theater tricks and um, theme park tricks, you know, in here, and uh, we decided we kind of wanted to do this light side, uh, dark side kind of opposite thing. And we, we thought a lot about uh, color palettes and how, you know, how those would affect the way the things look. So everything here on the light side is like tan and brown and green. And then we sort of went for an afternoon-y sort of palette here. And then a nighttime palette over here with the dark greens and dark grays and oranges. And we tried to be pretty meticulous about, um, you know, not using certain colors in certain places. Right, yeah, and it all, like you said, it kind of all adds to that scene then, and uh, with the music and then the movement, it all adds up to, to create a really nice scene for people to stand here and watch. What's, what have the reactions been of the public so far? Oh, they seem to be very delighted uh, I, and surprised, I think, because they just come by and they're like, oh, this is really cool, and they take pictures, and I'm like, you want to see the show? And they're like, there's a show? <laughs> and, uh, you know, we give them the show, and I think probably the most surprising for people is that the upper room turns around and that there's the, the big snake back there. They don't expect it. So I always like standing here and watching people's faces and all of a sudden their eyes get really big and they smile and yeah, it's really, um, it's been wonderful. Yeah, and especially seeing uh, the kids really, really are excited by it, which is great. Well, it's very impressive. I really appreciate you taking the time to put this together and to bring it out to the show. Thank you so much for chatting with me about it. Yeah, thank you.
My name's Andrew Schultz. Uh, originally, I came up with the idea about two years ago when they had the invasion theme. So the first thing I uh, built was the round tower, which I actually had two years ago, but I couldn't figure out how to fit in the display, so I held it off for this year, and then it's just start building the castle, and once the castle's built, build the base around it, and then I would have gone all the way across, but I kind of ran out of gray bricks, so that's why I have the slope. Okay, and then if we move down this way, we've got, what have we got, the moat here, and then what else do we have? Yeah, well, we have um, the villagers, you know, what's left of the village with the soldiers attacking through it, and I decided to add the three predators as, you know, gods to help out the, the soldiers, and but um, they're not going to survive. <laughs> got about a minute before they get overwhelmed here. It looks like it, yeah. So talk a, a little bit more about the techniques and some of the different parts of this castle here. I like you've got the towers coming off and some of the cool roof techniques. Right. Well, the, the, the towers here, I had to, uh, to get the thing, I had to do them upside down. So, because they, they have no slants like that. <laughs> and originally I built the castles with the, the towers with the windows all the way around. And then I added the smokestacks, and I realized that you can't have windows where the smokestacks are, so I had to go and re take out all the windows. <laughs> and same with the keep. You know, I probably built it twice before I finally got the, you know, the thing. And so, yeah, it's just a matter of I build, and I put it, and it, sometimes it works, and sometimes it don't. So you take it apart and rebuild. And, and you have a lot of gray brick here. Where did you source all that from? Well... Originally, when uh, the Lego store used to sell boxes, I got quite a few boxes, but then they stopped selling boxes, so, which is unfortunate, but. Right, right. What's the hardest part of doing a build like this? This is a pretty, pretty sizable build, especially the castle here. What's the toughest part of that for you? Trying to figure out how to build it so I can take it apart and bring it here. Because you have to be able to move it, and boxes are only so big, so you gotta figure out to build the bases and that will fit in the boxes I already have and then bring them up here, so. So is it kind of modular the way it breaks down or how does that work then? Yeah, the base plates are modular in sections of uh, four, you know, two by two base plates. And then of course the walls are separate from the towers and this, this actually whole part pops off in the bottom. So, and each building is, you know, you can take apart and so. That's really cool. And then I really love your design on some of these houses here. Was there any particular inspiration for the look of these, or how did that work? Well, as you can tell from the, the three middle buildings, those are based on the um, medieval village. Okay. And the, the big one, I just kind of went online and Googled, you know, medieval inns, <laughs> found a kind of a picture that kind of looked cool. So that's how the red roof inn came up. And the barn over there, that's just straight off of one set. I kind of got tired and lazy, so I just, oh, this barn looks nice, and just plopped it on there. I, I really like what you've done with the landscaping, too, kind of the rock work and all of this yeah. slope till and all that. Is that tough for you? Do you enjoy that type of building? Well, I kind of, I do kind of enjoy doing the landscape. Um, the way I did here is I knew, it, since I didn't have enough gray to go straight across, I had to do the slope, and I knew it was going to be a, you know, a jagged slope. So that's why all these, the three leaves, are used to kind of camouflage the stepping part of it. My name is Bob Weiss. Uh, I'm a member of Archlug. 
I have been building castles for six years coming to BrickCon. And I've been wanting to do Mont Saint Michel ever since I started coming to BrickCon because I think it's one of the most beautiful places that combines outstanding geography. And it's, it was very challenging because I had to get the right shape and I had to make the uh, houses and the whole thing easy to move. So the houses are all on a, on a little uh, flat made out of uh, tiles so they can go in boxes. Because when I made other castles, everything was connected and it was hard to move. And I've gotten better every year because the, the sec there's three sections and a fourth, the cathedral sits in the middle and they fit on tiles again with uh, little plates every once in a while to tie them down and they're, you could drop these and they wouldn't completely break apart. They're inside, they're, I'm trying to make them bulletproof uh, to move. So. I really had fun doing it, but I much prefer making castles that are just out of my imagination because it's a lot easier. <laughs> so, yeah. I got all these pictures to look at and like, <laughs> wait a minute, it's not what I just did. Were you able to visit it in person? No, to I, I have not, but I had a friend bring me back a bunch of guidebooks and I bought some guidebooks, but I'm hoping to go in about two years. Okay. I just keep going to other places in Europe, unfortunately. <laughs> Right, there's so many cool castles to see there. Yeah. So when, when you started on this, where did you kind of first start and like build out from? Okay, well, I had a map and I put down grids. So I had little, you know, uh, one by two black uh, tiles here. And so A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I, take, I took the overhead and made the outline of the island, uh, recreating as well as I could what it was. And then... Uh, then I made these walls uh, along here, and then I started right here, and this didn't turn out real well. This should have been steeper, uh, but I started making this, and then I kind of went around to here, and then I, then I went, started at the other end and built up to about this level, and then I had to block off the, the monastery church was in, in the middle. So... In the future, some of these are, are these are 32 by 32 stud base plates, and some of them are connected, and I'm going to make them all just 32 by. They, it, they're so much easier to move uh, when you make something like this. So, so, it's gotten a lot. I've gotten a lot better at this every time I do it. So uh, I was very pleased with this. <laughs> Yeah, it turned out really amazing. So uh, these house designs then, it seems like you kind of use a similar design for a lot of them as far as size yeah. and well, stuff. You know, How did that? Yeah, yeah. well, I had to have run them on rails. It's like, see, that's the edge of a, okay. of a base plate. And so you, I would have liked to have them staggered more, but only about a third of the village that's there is here. So you got you to gotta, you change it where I could recreate the monastery you know, uh, somewhat similar to what it looks like. This is, you know, it's very small in comparison. So I had to, it, it loses a little bit of reality because they're in such close rows. And what I did was alter, I tried to alternate. I've got black, new gray, old gray, dark blue, dark brown, old brown, new brown, tan. So I've got different colors. The houses were very plain, so I couldn't make them look real. Uh, like most people doing castles and architecture have a lot of fine detail, but you look at the pictures, they don't have them. So I added a little, but so it's, it's just more recreating the look of what they had. And this friend that brought back a guidebook was like, I had three guidebooks and I keep looking at all, I had blown up pictures and put them on the wall. And then he brings back one and it's got a better view of right here and I realized, oh my gosh, there's a church there. <laughs> you know, I didn't, they didn't have a good view of it anywhere else. And so I, I, I put, the, put the church in. And uh, this, the, this is last year's model that was sold to participants made by BrickCon. And I thought that was kind of cute. And it's, it's madness was everybody's running away and they're just here as tourists. <laughs> so... 
they're, they're lemmings. If you look around back there, they're jumping off the back uh, into the ocean. But this is a real place, and it, it's an island at high tide, uh, and then a causeway connected to the mainland. I mean, this is covered up at high tide. Right, okay, so there's water over it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a, and it, we have like 12 foot tide differentials here. There they have 60 foot. Wow. So, anyway. Yeah. That's amazing. And so, what would you say, you know, a build of this size, this many pieces, what's kind of the toughest part for you when you're approaching a build like this? Uh, well, for this, it's, it, was, it was recreating the shape that to fit reality. And then uh, underneath that was getting the engineering right so this part would be sturdy. I've made castles every year and they were kind of flimsy and this fits just like a glove. It's just amazing. So... Uh, and then the, so I kind of enjoy the engineering of it, you know, aside from, you know, and this, I like to do free form. I thought of coming to the computer, uh, BrickLink has a new computer program, and I thought, I don't want, I like to just sit down, and it's like, I can't carve in wood because I make too many mistakes. That's why I like Lego. I can make a mistake, <laughs> and I can take it apart and start all over again. Exactly, and it seems like you've been doing castle building for a while now. What makes that so attractive to you versus space or whatever other theme that might be? At one point, I wanted to be an architect, okay. and I had a castle set when I was a little kid uh, made out of uh, metal, okay? Uh, and I've always liked castles. When I go to Europe, I go to places and take pictures of them, and it, they fascinate me. I, I, I studied history in college and for, uh, uh, particularly military history, and so I read about fortifications. So it kind of combines an interest in architecture and uh, history, and just having an inclination for this particular stage of history. I just think they're beautiful. Now, this is unusual. Most of my, all my other castles are like his gray on dark gray, and this fits the colors. Uh, which was very different. Yeah, was it hard to get all those tan pieces? Where'd you source those from? Uh, well, the hard ones were the, the dark brown the, tiles, I mean, uh, uh, slopes. I started buying tan and dark tan on BrickLink for this two and a half years ago. <laughs> wow. I mean, just knowing I was going to need a lot, yeah. you know, and so uh, it, it took a while to get, and even, even then I ran out. I kept running out of, of things that I didn't. I ran out of those those brown windows. Uh, I ran out of just tan uh, uh, bricks. I ran out of gray uh, roof tiles, and I thought I had enough to build five. You know, it just you know. I think I spent two thousand bucks on parts wow. because you know I just. Didn't get, didn't have as much as I thought. And then I have some left over. I'd bought too many of other. You can't win. <laughs>